Good morning, Westfield High School. Today is Thursday, February 17th, 2022. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, WHS, and welcome to BDTV. I'm David Lima. And I'm Gabe Dion. Come to the Rare Disease Awareness Club meeting next Thursday, February 24th. It's right after school in room 190. They will discuss future plans and take the yearbook photo. Coding with a Cause will be meeting today after school in room 131 to continue their C++ lessons. The WHS Humanities Club will be having a meeting immediately after school in room 147 on Tuesday, February 22nd. Juniors interested in being tested for the seal of biliteracy must register by next Friday. Please see your current or former world language teacher for a registration flyer. It's time now for a sports update with Michael Cerrotti. Good morning, WHS. I'm Michael Cerrotti, and here's your BDTV sports update. Yesterday, the girls' basketball team beat Kent Place by 52, as five players scored in double figures in the 64-12 win. Congratulations to the girls' track and field team, who qualified for New Balance Nationals in the distance medley relay. Emily DeSarno, Gabby Demeter, Julia Schneider, and Sonia Olson ran a season-best 12:34 and helped Westfield qualify for this prestigious meet for the third consecutive year. Congrats, girls. The bowling team completed their season yesterday, finishing in second place in the NJSIAA State Tournament Group 3 Division. The Blue Devils scored the third highest team score out of 45 teams in the tournament. Junior Perry Kukuro earned the high series of the tournament with a 7.50. Perry will represent Westfield in the NJSIAA Individual State Tournament tomorrow at Bolero starting at 9 a.m. Today, the boys hockey team heads to Cody Arena for a top 15 matchup against Livingston. The McInnes Cup is on the line, so make sure to pack the stands. The boys swim team also looks to bring home more hardware. Ranked second in the state, they will face number three Bridgewater Raritan for the sectional championship at seven at the Raritan Bay YMCA. The girls' swim team will also compete for the sectional championship at 7 o'clock tomorrow against top-ranked Bridgewater. On Sunday, the wrestling team has districts at 9.30 a.m. at home. That's all for today's sports report. Back to you, Gabe and Dave. Thanks, Michael. We continue our celebration of Black History Month on the Westfield African American Walking Tour in Fairview Cemetery. We now go to Kayla Lewison. Fairview Cemetery is by far the largest burial ground and many are laid to rest here. But today, we're going to focus specifically on some graves that connect with slavery and the Civil War. The tombstone here says Jude, a faithful and beloved servant. Can you tell us more about who this was? Certainly. So the Denman family, uh, who were buried here, they were um, a very close family. They obviously loved their servant, Jude. Uh, you will see on her tombstone. It says beloved servant. There is a beautiful photograph and you can see she's well dressed. She looks very healthy. She looks happy. They seem to have had a very positive relationship with her. In addition, uh, just we recently uncovered Mr. Denman's will and in his will he instructs his wife to care for Jude. Uh, he predeceases Jude and his wife, and so there are in instructions to care for her. So what we see is beloved servant. But when we look closely at the tombstone, we see that Jude died at the age of 42, and that it says she's a beloved servant for 39 years. That means she was a servant at three years old. So that tells a story. Now we visit the grave sites of African Americans who fought during the Civil War. And as we can see, it seems to be an integrated patch of land. So can you tell us how this came to be? How were the white soldiers and the African American soldiers all buried here as equals? Sure. Fairview is a good example of a Westfield's evolving attitude toward race. So at a time when uh, many, many cemeteries were segregated, you, you have expressed exactly uh, that this is an integrated uh, cemetery and we have here 
uh, African-American Civil War soldiers and their white peers buried honorably and with great dignity and together. And this is probably the work of the Grand Army of the Republic, which is an organization that formed after the Civil War to support veterans, their pensions, honorable burials. And so you, you have here an example of the work of the Grand Army of the Republic. Uh, though African-American soldiers did not receive pensions, um, they do have honorable burial here. This is a beautiful, a beautiful spot exemplifying that. Thanks, Kayla. We continue our Black History Month celebration at the look at Brightwood Park and its unique history. Have a great long weekend, WHS, and go Blue Devils!